Why does it the matter in Saturn's rings accumulate? Like Saturn's rings are very thin and they're small particles and they're mm -hmm. very thin. And the matter does collect. It collects into certain zones, clearing out other zones. So in fact, Saturn's rings have gaps in them. Which you kind of see. If right? it, you can see with a medium power backyard telescope. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they're, they're, it's not just simply a gap. You can see like the the ball of Saturn through that gap when it's at the right angle. Right. So you know there are no particles there, or at least very few. So they collect, not in a sphere, but they collect orbitally, mm -hmm. all right? Because they have stable orbits around Saturn, and they're not much mass there to begin with, they're not gonna overcome this orbit and then co coalesce into one moon, for example. When our moon was created, we had a ring. We were sideswiped by another planet. Right. And our Earth's crust got spewed into orbit around us into a ring, and that ring then coalesced into the moon. <laughs> Is it true that if one had an ocean large enough, Saturn would float? Is that the average density of Saturn is less than the density of water. Anything that whose density is less than water will float. So the problem is, if you had a lake bigger than Saturn, to yeah. put Saturn in, the whole lake would collapse into Saturn. Well, right? wouldn't the water just spill over onto the shore when you put, when it displaces the water? No, 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 you're thinking that they exist independently of each other. Saturn will pull the bathtub into it and it'll become part of Saturn. Oh, it's got the suction power. So the problem is you can't have a body of water bigger than Saturn that's flat that you're gonna put Saturn in. Because the body of water would become a sphere and they collapse, they fall into each other, right? Oh. They each have mutual gravity that they'll attract each other. Right. So it's not a doable experiment, right. but it does get the point across yes. that Saturn is lighter than water. Right. So it is in fact true. It is the only planet for which that is true. Every other planet would sink. So you know how big it is? Mm -hmm. So what is density? It's, and we know the mass of Saturn. We can measure it from its gravity and other things. Mm -hmm. You divide those two numbers, you get a number that's less than one. 2,000 years ago to say these planets, they're going forward and then backwards. Uh, our mind is not equipped to compute that. In fact, Claudius Ptolemy, AD 150, brilliant guy. He bet on the wrong horse. In the margin of his notes, he said, when I trace at my pleasure the windings to and fro of the heavenly bodies, I no longer touch earth with my feet. I stand in the presence of Zeus himself and take my fill of ambrosia. Is he was feeling divinity in that moment. Yeah. Okay, we call it mythology, but it's his religion. If he's referencing Zeus, that's his god. He doesn't have the answers. He's just pawing at them with epicycles and all these sort of constructs to try to understand how the universe works. If you've been around throughout the history of time, you'd be at a hundred turns of our understanding saying we just can't cope with it, but someone smarter than you comes along and copes with it, learns about it, figures it out, and we move on. Because the kitchen is the first and last bastion of science in the house. Oil that makes the surface of the pan non-stick. The oil is now the surface of the pan and it's smooth because the pan itself, the metallic surface is structured, okay? So you put in oil and oil will fill all the nooks and crannies and make a smooth surface and then you burn it there, okay? So then it just solidifies the part that got burned. The got polymerization mm -hmm. is what he's talking about. Right. Beyond that, it's stuck because it's burned onto the pan. You can remove it with a Brillo pad or with, with heavy soap, right. you can remove it. It's not permanently affixed the way Teflon is sort of permanently attached. Right. Why it's non-stick, that's a really, really smooth surface at that point. Frontier of non-stick surfaces when introduced to food means there's much less food waste. Right. We try to get the last of the peanut butter in the jar, the last of the mayonnaise, right. the last of everything else. Simulation theory, is this is just new age kooks that are just rejecting science. There isn't a strong argument against it so it persists the computing power to create a simulation in the computer you create people with personalities then they say all right we want to play games too and then they invent a world in their computers that they simulate and then that world invents a world that they simulate so in this construct there's one real world and all the worlds derivative of that are simulated which world are you most likely to hit not the first one not the first one if that's going on at all we're probably in one of these simulated universes they like simulating worlds that don't have the ability to create a perfect simulation. So these would be worlds that are just nostalgic. Like, think of movies. Do you know how many movies are made that were made before we could make movies? Sorry, I didn't say that right. Do you know how many movies are made set in an era before we could make movies? Do you know how many? What fraction? 60%. No, no. Less than 1%. Oh. So, how much does a whale weigh? Well, a whale weighs nothing. It's 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 neutrally buoyant, floating, uh, swimming in the water. You have to ask how much mass does it have. It's why the biggest animals that ever existed exist in the water. They don't have to hold up their own weight against the gravity uh, on Earth's surface. Wow. The whale is the biggest 
creature that ever existed in the history of life on Earth. And yet it can float. Because its density is about the same as water. If you are less than water, it would have to use energy to stay under underwater because the water would want to make it float. Which is happens to human beings. Well, if you're real if you're chubbier, you will your body will float. Okay. okay? Will float very well. Mm -hmm. And you'll take energy to go down below. If you are more dense than water, you will sink to the bottom and it'll take energy to stay afloat. If you're about the same density as water, you can move through the water. There's a story on TikTok about the, the blue houses in Hawaii that didn't burn down. And they said, because this certain kind of blue paint won't burn. And like Oprah painted her roof blue like yeah. months before it happened. You do not know what blue items did burn and are not visible to you as having survived the fire, correct? Yeah. So you don't have the baseline statistic on what fraction of all blue things burned. You're looking at what survived it, assuming all blue survived it. If you approach something scientifically, you want to ask those questions. And then you say, is there some common material among the blue that is fire retardant of those things that did survive? What, what's your first thought when you're confronting something that's interesting or unusual? And if you're a, a trained scientist, you, you have enough knowledge of the laws of physics that you start there. Yeah. That, those aren't your last resort, they're your first resort. Well, I just like to believe things. <laughs> <laughs>